The opening scene features a courageous journalist who is seen recounting all the past incidents of the war and documenting it all in her diary. She prefers to remain anonymous, as a result of which she is addressed as Anonima. As she recounts, the scene flashes back to the year 1945, depicting the last days of the Second World War in Europe. It turns out the Soviet Union unleashed three fronts from 45 miles east of Berlin in order to capture the city. On that day, Anonima kisses goodbye to her husband, who is a high-ranking German soldier in the Nazi party. Following this departure, she goes to hang out with her upper-class friends, as usual. During this, she talks about the ongoing condition of the world, and also believes that their country will win the war. The group remains oblivious to the invasion of Soviet troops until a huge explosion disrupts their party. As they run for their lives, we see the devastation of Nazi Germany, where buildings are destroyed everywhere. Amid this bombing run, Anonima, along with other civilians, comes across an underground bunker that houses an assortment of women, children, and several elderly people. Anonima recognizes a few people in the shelter. Most of them are scared of leaving behind their noble occupations or missing loved ones who participated in the war. She also witnesses a grim sight of a woman suffocating due to her exposure to the chemical weapons used by the Soviets. As she sits and grabs a drink, she ponders on their present struggle and decides to write everything she sees for her husband. Later, during a brief ceasefire, the Soviet troops march on the streets, searching for surviving Germans. They also order the German soldiers to come out and surrender themselves. However, the Nazis refuse to accept an easy defeat, so they choose to put up one final fight. They open fire from the top floors and balconies of the buildings and manage to take down several enemy soldiers. Despite this, the overwhelming number of Soviets eventually overpowers them. In the aftermath, Major Andrei Rybkin receives a phone call from his superior, ordering him and his battalion to halt their further progress to Reichstag. In the meantime, one of the Soviet soldiers locates the hidden civilians in the bunker. Anonima, who has traveled to more than 12 countries and knows several languages, tries to distract the soldiers by talking to him in Russian. However, her efforts prove futile as several young women are summoned out of their hiding. Anonima walks out and witnesses the whole street surrounded by the Soviet army, who are all celebrating their victory. The women are then interrogated and teased by the Soviets, making them feel uncomfortable. As a result, Anonima runs back to the underground, only to see a young Celestia girl being abused. After waiting for the right moment, she quickly hands the girl keys to her old penthouse and urges her to flee the scene. Following this, Anonima stumbles upon another soldier forcing a German woman to an abandoned room for his gratification. In an attempt to help her, she pursues them to the room, but when she tries to trick him, the woman runs away, trapping her alone with the soldier. Aware of the impending assault, she feels terrified but manages to remain calm. In a dark action, she lures the soldier into a dark room and locks him behind a cage before fleeing. She then goes to Major Andre and requests to stop the abuse. However, he disregards her concern, claiming that the soldier are clean and healthy to do anything they want. Disheartened, she returns back to the bunker, only to be pulled by a soldier into darkness and forced on. In the next scene, a kind German widow allows Anonima to stay in an apartment complex with other surviving civilians. Later, while conversing, one of the abused women mentions that the Soviet troops are planning to eliminate all the Germans soon. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when the Soviets break into the apartment in order to abduct the women. As a result, all the civilians begin to flee, except for Anonima, who thinks that running away is futile. Following this, the Soviet soldiers spot her and, well, Alright. These incidents become a daily ordeal, forcing the women to submit themselves for the soldiers' pleasure. Over time, Anonima conditions herself to endure the soldiers' demands, degrading herself even more. Despite such hardships, she tries to uplift the spirits of the women, assuring them that they will survive. However, at one point, Anonima is forced to go through a particularly rough ordeal. Unable to tolerate it any longer, she, accompanied by another woman named Barbie, goes to see Major Andre 
Andre and complains about the brutal assault. In response, the Major dismisses them, recounting how the German soldiers did much worse things to Russians in the past battles. Despite facing rejection, Anonima doesn't give up and goes to Lieutenant Anatole to ask him for help. The latter agrees on the condition that she has to serve him this afternoon. She accepts the offer, thinking that she can at least be saved from the lowly soldier's relentless assaults. Later that day, Anatole invites Anonima and some German civilians to party with his fellow soldiers in an apartment. As they all enjoy themselves, Anatole and Anonima engage in a fun conversation. After the party, everyone retires to bed, while Anonima has to fulfill the lieutenant's desire. The next day, she returns to her apartment and sees Major Andre, who has come to meet her. However, she ignores him because he didn't care about any of her previous complaints. In order to make it up to her, he instructs one of the soldiers to fetch water and soap for a bath. A Russian medic, Masha, is furious by what Major Andre is doing. As a result, she personally delivers the bathing soap to Anonima and vents her anger by throwing the soap on her feet, also declaring that Berlin is theirs. Later on, the Major makes everyone leave and talks to Anonima in private. Expecting him to seek the same gratification as others, she enters a room and undresses without a word. When he sees the bruises all over her body, he finally feels bad for how the women are being treated and walks away. Several days pass by, but the Soviet soldiers are still abusing the German women. The Major feels sorry for the situation, but lacks the courage to confront his team. In the meantime, Anonima continues writing her experiences in her diary. In her note, she describes Anatole as a gypsy who comes and goes as he pleases. A few days later, Major Andre and a few of his soldiers come to the widow woman's apartment, carrying some delicious food. They then sit together with the German civilians and enjoy their time conversing. Not long after, another group of Soviet soldiers, led by Lieutenant Andropov, break into the apartment building and start barging into each room. Hearing the commotion, Major Andre and the others walk out to inquire what's going on, to which a soldier claims that he saw an armed German soldier stealing their food. He suspects that the thief lives on the top floor of the building, but Anonima denies this. It actually turns out that a young German soldier has been staying in the penthouse with the same Celestian girl from earlier. In order to extract the truth, the soldier starts beating up an elderly man, which enrages Major Andre. The Major then beats up the soldier, nearly killing him in rage. As the crowd disperses, Major Andre goes to the bedroom with Anonima and embraces her tightly, indicating that he has started liking her. Later, when the Major leaves, Anonima goes to the penthouse to warn the Celestian girl. But to her surprise, she finds the young German soldier who chose to stay hidden instead of going to Siberia with his comrades. Unable to figure out how to react, she simply walks away, deciding to keep the encounter a secret. In the following days, Major Andre frequently visits the civilian's apartment and spends some good time together, also offering them protection. Over time, he grows closer and closer to Anonima, sharing personal details such as his bank account, passport, the names of all his twinks in WoW, and even the names of his relatives. But unbeknownst to him, Anonima continues to have secret intercourse with Anatole. This makes her scared that the Major might find out about this one day and, well, kill her. One fine day, Anonima is returning to her apartment after fetching some water. During this, she bumps into her old friend Elk, who has been out of town. The two are over overjoyed to see each other again. Anonima brings her to the apartment and introduces her to the rest of the residents. Following this, the women spend an entire day sharing their experiences with the Russians. In particular, they gossip about their sexual encounters with the Soviet soldiers and even make fun of them. More like Russian to the finish line. A few days later, the artillery general of Germany comes to announce that Adolf Hitler has committed the unthinkable, which means Germany has lost the war. He orders all the remaining soldiers to surrender because any resistance will be in vain. The news brings joy to the Soviet soldiers, who then start celebrating in the streets, beginning with their national anthem. On the other hand, the friendly group of Russians returns to the civilian apartment with gifts and food. Major Andre plays a soothing tune on the piano, creating a peaceful atmosphere. After a while, he goes to see Anonima in her bedroom, and they have some private conversation. It is at this moment that he confesses his feelings for her, and 
and asks her to accompany him to Russia. She is clearly hesitant, but she opts not to answer him for now. Meanwhile, a drunk soldier goes up to the penthouse and proceeds to force himself on the Silesian girl. Seeing this, the young German soldier reveals himself and opens fire on the drunk man. However, he misses the shot, and as a result, a physical brawl ensues between the two. Soon after, the Soviet soldier throws the boy from the top floor, which results in his death. This commotion alerts everyone, prompting them to gather in the stairway. The Silesian girl swears allegiance to Hitler, due to which she is immediately executed. The soldiers then demand to know the owner of the penthouse, and Anonima admits that it is hers. Hearing this, Lieutenant Andropov tells the Major to punish her, but the latter refuses. The Lieutenant threatens to report the incident to higher officials, but the Mayor seems to be ready to bear all the consequences for Anonima. In the aftermath, the soldiers continue their revelry, while Major Andre appears clearly fed up. After some time, he heads back to Anonima's room, where she is currently serving Anatole. Surprisingly, the Major does nothing more than ordering Anatole to leave. After this, he compels all residents to gather in the living room to celebrate Hitler's demise by drinking, singing, and dancing. The party soon escalates, and everyone eventually begins to enjoy themselves. After the party, Major Andre talks to Anonima in private, once again urging her to come to Russia with him as his life partner. However, she is forced to decline, saying that she still has a husband who will be coming home soon. Hearing her refusal, he prepares to leave, but she halts him and passionately kisses him. Following this, the two end up spending a night together. This makes it clear that Anonima also has genuine feelings for Andre. The next day, she visits her neighbor, Ilsa Hoch, only to be confronted by a heartbreaking sight. Ilsa's retired military husband has committed the unthinkable, likely due to their defeat in the war. Anonima then tries to console Ilsa, but her efforts prove futile. Following this, Anonima grabs a bicycle and goes in search of Major Andre to seek help, but she cannot find him anywhere. After a while, she returns back to her apartment and is shocked to find Lieutenant Andropov along with her husband, Gerd, waiting for her. The lieutenant hands her a note from Major Andre, informing her that he is about to be transferred to an undisclosed location due to the previous incident. After the lieutenant departs, Gerd confronts Anonima, visibly upset towards her. She tries to explain that she does not live alone in the apartment. She also hands him her diary and tells him to read about all the suffering that she has endured since the Soviets invaded Berlin. She hopes that Gerd will understand the situation she was in at the time, but the latter is so disappointed that he refers to her as a disgusting woman. Afterwards, Anonima rushes to the military camp to meet Major Andre one last time. Even though she is saddened by his departure, she expresses gratitude for protecting her and for treating her well. Before parting ways, they hold each other's hands and wish for each other's well-being. Anonima then returns home, only to find her husband wreaking havoc in the apartment. But despite the chaos, she refrains from uttering a word word of intervention. A couple of days later, Gerd leaves the place without notifying her. Anonima narrates that she does not know where he went or whether he will ever return to her. In the final scene, it is revealed that when her diary was initially published in Germany in the year 1959, it faced indignant rejection, labeled as a disgrace to German women. Shocked by the contempt from her contemporaries, the author refused to allow any further editions to be published until her death. As a result, even after her passing, her name remained a closely guarded secret. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.